Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be with Kara Payton, who is the author of The Happiness Habit, a personal guide to becoming the happiest person you know. I want to be the happiest person I know. Kara, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me, Seth. Excited to be here. Our pleasure. So let's go back in time just a little bit. How does one get into the happiness business? <laughs> well, a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot, a lot of years of being very unhappy. <laughs> that's that's probably the the shortest way I could answer that question. All right. Can we narrow that? Down? Can we unpack that just a little? <laughs> Absolutely. I um, I spent my life pretty much just doing what I feel like most people do. They go through their life checking the boxes. They get the house. They get the they get the college. They get married. They have the two point eight kids. The white picket fence. The whole nine yards. I had checked off every single box known to man that I that I had set before myself. I walked into my massive house, drove in the driveway with my Mercedes and all of that. I had more money than I knew what to do with, couldn't spend it all. And I realized that I had no more boxes to check and I was still very unhappy. And lo and behold, I had this very, very weird out of body experience where, you know, something akin to what you would watch and eat, pray, love. <laughs> and um, pretty much just audibly said, hey, you know, God, universe, whatever. If this is all there is to life, let me find some sort of peace with this. But if it's not, you know, break me open and show me what life's about because I am deeply unhappy. And, you know, that's when my paths crossed with Tony Robbins and Gabby Bernstein and Wayne Dyer. And I toured um, as a staff member for Tony for a lot of years. And that kind of struck the trajectory that we have a an active participation possible in our thoughts and emotions and in those habits and the things that we choose for ourselves. I had no idea. I was one of those people that head down desk, lived my life, didn't ask, paid the bill. You know, there was no participation that I knew. I just, I felt how I felt. And I kind of thought that it was external circumstances, or if you're unhappy, then you need to change your relationship. If you're unhappy, then you need to change your job. It was never if you're unhappy, you need to start asking questions of yourself. And so long winded way of getting around to say, I started asking myself the right questions, started asking myself better questions to begin with and uh, ended up with a better outcome. Well, that is awesome. And I'm sure the longer version of the story is in the book. How, what, what got to ask as a life as, as a 30 plus year lifelong Tony fan and someone who has, you know, done UPW and date with destiny and coach it, all, all that kinds of stuff. Um, what was that experience like of, you know, being on the road, doing events? What were some of the things that you learned along the way? You know, a lot of people ask me that and these, it's the same answer every time in all of my years, you know, going with him in these events, not only did I be, notice that I became someone different in his presence, there was just a version of me that showed up. And that version of me, I realized that I had access to that when I got off the plane and I was back at home. And I started learning how to can that version of myself. Like if that's who I show, if I can show up for Tony for a 20 hour day and I am level 100 Navy SEAL status, 20 hour days, and I have not dropped an inkling of energy, what would that be? What if I took that energy and made it for my own empire, my own legacy, my own, you know, goals and outcomes? 
but as far as Tony and my observations of him, you know, I, we did multiple events per year, live in person, multiple days. If you went to UPW, you know, and I did date with destiny. I did the whole master university. This man doesn't have a point in time where he kind of has to stage his emotions, stage his involvement, stage his commitment. I watched him day after day, weekend after weekend, year after year. And when he would address the crowd or talk to someone and he's got tears in his eyes and he is pouring his whole soul into someone, never did I ever watch him manifest or fake or stage or act. That is really him. That is really his heart. And he has learned how to harness an energy source from outside of himself. And he credits God to that. And that, that ability and that chase and that ever present reminder that if you're, if you're at the end of yourself, fantastic, that's where the real magic that can begin, but you have to reach into a higher, a deeper, wider version of yourself to show up to that. And he was probably the best example I've ever had. That is a great answer, no matter how many times you've sold it other places. It's the first time we're hearing it, so we appreciate it. What inspired you to write the book? Understanding that without the question, without being the flashlight, without seeking truth and authenticity, there are so many people that are going to live on default because I didn't open my mouth, because I didn't share a word, because I didn't write the book. The people I have in my corner, have in my world, the people I come in contact with, a lot of them. Yes, personal development has taken off since 2020, no doubt. Most of us are asking questions. Most of us are doing some form of self-discovery. However, most of us still have a pretty big falsehood living inside of ourselves that so much of this stuff is playing on loop and there's nothing we can do about it and it's absolute top to bottom bs every single thing you want to change about yourself your life your relationships your finances everything everything could be changed and as long as we're willing to seek truth seek authenticity seek it all the way to the core main vein no matter how painful or uncomfortable it gets i it was pretty much my lighthouse to write that book. That's that's why I put it out there in the world. Were you in the business of, for lack of a better term, inspiring others before you wrote the book? No, God no. I was I was, I was in I was in restaurants first, sales, um, and then I went into the wedding industry, opened my own business as a photographer and videographer. I had nothing to do with any of it. So was there a day, a moment, an epiphany? The light bulb goes off, and you were like. I have to share this or were people asking you and saying, how are you doing what you're doing, being who you're being and I need to tell my story? No, I had actually the opposite of that. I had a lot of people exiting stage left because they're like, you've changed too much. I don't know how to, I don't know how to process you. And we're used to our bad habits and our drinking and our complaining and our gossiping and our toxic relationships. And I had a lot of people that were, kind of felt betrayed that I was no longer going to sit in those circles. And uh, in 2021, when I put both feet into the arena was when my brother lost his battle to PTSD. And awesome. I realized being in the mental health space, there's not enough people that are willing to go against the grain. There's veterans in therapy for decades for you know, something that was in Operation Iraqi Freedom that's forever ago. They're still in therapy. They're not getting any further. There needs to be somebody that can be boldly stepping on the edge of what we know about mental health and go, this isn't working. Let's explore other things. Let's do other things. Let's challenge the status quo. And um, his death reminded me that those things that I know that I know that I know, just because I'm scared, because I'm not qualified and I'm not, I don't have the right arena to maybe speak on this uh he he was absolutely that that constant reminder and challenge like hey get in the arena well that is a beautiful empowering meaning um as tony would say so what do you what are your hopes for the book what do you hope it does if it is only life-changing for one human being i will have it will have turned out infinitely better than i could ever hope 
my ideal, my dream is that it, it causes people instead of this world where we're codependent on relationships, codependent on external appearances and beauty, external, uh, you know, value and wealth, it, when we're dependent on all of these external things that can come and go that are frankly fleeting, temporary, unreliable, conditional, everyone has the ability to feel peace, joy, love, prosperity, abundance, absolute bliss in every moment. And they need none of this crap out here to do it. They have personal confidence and freedom totally available to them at in all moments. And there's multiple, there's multiple paths to it, but ultimately the way to advocate, self-advocate, self-explore, self-transform and self-fulfill. When I am, when I am me and I know I have my own back in the corner of a dark room, I know that no matter what comes at me, I've got me and that's enough. If I can train and convince one other human being that they are all they need, that book was a 100% success to me in my eyes. What were some of the, what were and what are some of the questions you asked yourself that changed things for you? At the end of the night, on a nightly basis, I ask myself, what would a truer version of myself look like tomorrow? And I just kind of, I toy with the idea it's, it gives me an opportunity to stay in kind of a feminine energy. Um, it gives me an opportunity to kind of open up and stop being so rigid or controlling or manipulative or whatever, you know, wound or fear or control needs that I would normally grip on. This is my plan. This is my way. This is the way it has to look. These are my expectations. These are my metrics and markers of what success looks like. It helps keep that completely open for being informed by authenticity, by synchronicity by being open and on an energetic basis to the right people, the right things to come into all into fruition in, this, in the right timing. So that's probably the best question I would say, what is, is this true? Can I know it to be true? And what could be even truer than this that I carried with me today? Is the book out already or is it coming out? The fall. It's the fall. Out. Yeah. Uh, do we have a release date? We had a release date of September 1st. We have some formatting that I have to scrub. So <laughs> I wanted it again, wanted it my way. When you're working with other people, there's some suggestions and you have to let go of your your ideal for a little bit to let to really, you know, surrender the process a little bit. So <laughs> it's coming at some point. Yes, absolutely. Before the end of the year. <laughs> Before the end of the year. Awesome. Well, um, make sure to let us know when so we can promote it for you. When is what do you picture happening after the book comes out? Are you still in the business you were in before? Are you shifting that? Is there a separate Kara Payton happiness business? And talk us talk to us about the Happiness Habit podcast. Absolutely. That has kind of been, in 2020, I started the podcast. There was not a lot of people. We were all remote. We were all stuck at home. And there wasn't enough conversations being drawn around this space of anxiety and depression these conversations were talking about the education of it, what it means, the signs, the symptoms, all of that. But nobody was actually going into the nitty gritty and giving processes. Okay, you've confirmed you're depressed and it's circumstantial or environmental or chemical or whatever. What the hell do you do about it now? And I wanted to create a conversation. And since then, you know, three years later, if you had told me I was still going to be a podcast host, let alone a top you know, top 10% one, I would have absolutely not believed you. So this has been a wild dream. But from there, it's all about for me, just releasing the bite sized. If somebody needs a course, if somebody needs a video, if somebody needs a process, if somebody needs a coach, if somebody needs any of those things, I always keep bite size breathwork challenges, meditations, um, group communities. I'm all about that type of stuff. And I'm, as I go throughout this journey, if it's if it's prompted to me that that's what I need to put in the world, it, it's put in the world and it's always really accessible on my site. But that's um, it's all it all derived on this crazy harebrained idea at the happiness habit years ago. It's all stemmed from that. Well, that is beautiful for our folks watching and listening. Where is the best place for them to go to, if possible, get on a waiting list or notification list for the book? Where do they go to listen to the podcast? Where do they go to learn about all things Kara Payton? All things Kara Payton, I'm easily, I mean, you can Google search me. And if you're a TikTok person, I'm there. If you're an Instagram person, I'm there. If you're a website person, I'm there. But it's just karapayton.com houses all of that, whether it want, it's karapayton.com slash listen, slash subscribe, slash, I mean, it's it's all there. So karapayton.com would probably be 
the best hub for everybody who knows where needs to know where to start. Awesome. Well, we greatly appreciate your time. We know it's incredibly valuable. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Kara Payton, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for watching or listening. We will talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer. 49 faces looked to him in triumph. Over the last 12 months, they had each taken turns and promoted his business for a week at a time, driving over $987,342 in revenue. What if you had a network of 50 centers of influence who promoted your business every week for a year? Grab your copy of the number one Amazon best-selling book, The Ultimate Guide to Growing Your Business with a Podcast, at 33% off the Amazon price by going to ultimatepodcastbook.com. Again, that website for 33% off the Amazon price is ultimatepodcastbook.com.